There are two common pathways to becoming an artist. Do an art degree, when you finish that you rent a studio and a studio space, you find a place to practice your art. Both of these are currently not an option for learning disabled people. My name is Sherry Lennon, I'm a rocket artist. I like to be painting. My name is Pat. I'm a rocket artist. I'm Keith and I'm the rocket. I'm done, I'm going to have to do it properly. I'm a bit of a rock artist. My name is Andrew Pichon, I'm a rock artist. I'm a rock artist. And I painted my own and my drawings. Surely art, I not rockets and I not painting. My name's Marilla, I am the rocket artist. Artists are eight learning disabled artists. They are based at the Phoenix Arts Association. They're supported by the University of Brighton and the Arts Council. The Rocket Artists come here once a week. They work alongside degree students who choose to come here as part of an accredited module that explores inclusive arts practice. The Rocket Artists is part of a larger project called Access to Art which provides inclusive arts activities for learning disabled people. We provide the time, the space, the materials and the support for the Rockets to work on really ambitious projects and follow through their ideas. Rocket. So Pat, why do you come here? Because uh, I like lots of painting. You like to do painting? Yeah. Who do you work with when you're here? Um, what's her name? Is she a university student? Yeah. Is it Maria? Yeah. She's lovely. What sorts of things do you and Maria do together? She helped me, helped me to get the paint out. I'm like, do you do any painting at home or at the day centre? I don't do painting at home. I like that to rock it. If you didn't come here to make, if this stopped, would you be able to do your artwork anywhere else? Um, I, I like to do it here. Most of the Rockets live in care homes. This makes it really difficult for them to make quality art by themselves. Without the group, they're in isolation from the rest of the art world. I know what Peter usually says, but it's like, I treat them like a kid. Does that feel like you treat them like You had two pieces of work up in the Tate Modern, didn't you, in the gallery in London. How did that make you feel? Perfect. And what do you think your mum thought of that? Amazing. Do you feel like an artist? Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Oakland Brighton University, so I think that's what's been 
how mine and Peter's friendship really developed because he's a printmaker himself, so I think we bonded quite well because I, I had all the sort of technical ability to guide him and also because he knows about printmaking, he, he was able to sort of feed into my work as well. It's really freed me up, it's really kind of inspired me to work in a different way. University students provide a bridge into the contemporary arts world and they bring with them a real enthusiasm for creativity. I think it became evident that the power of what was happening here with the rockets, with um, the Tate Modern exhibition that happened a couple of years ago, and so many of the rocket artists were chosen and represented there. And I think then it became People became aware that there was something happening here that was really raising, raising the profile of, of, of this work, the nature of this work, and obviously something was right in what you were doing in terms of the support that was in place. And I think when you see the rocket artists at work, um, it's really, really interesting because the support feels right, the atmosphere feels right. Um, and, and the process is filled, it's putting those artists in a position where they can really start to explore and develop their practice as artists. Well, how would you feel if you couldn't make art? Not on my own. What do you mean? You get more help. How long have you been working on that, John? Oh, John, you self portrait. Which one do you like best, John? Impossible questions. <gasps> oh, <that one. laughs> Which one, John? Oh. Roxy. Really, Zoe. So, what's, what's this building here? Well, this building is doing a cafe. So you can have lots of them. So we're going to move this up for you. Give it up. What happens in five weeks? What's, what, what, what happens in five weeks' time? This is about raising, constantly, continuing raising it up, pushing it up. And the work follows, you know, what follows when they're feeling more mm -hmm. that sense of ownership, the 16th, they all know about the 16th. Well, I do a big honeymoon on it, it's bad. How do you draw honeymoon? Yeah. Very big. I find Luella inspiring. I find her use of colour, her sense of immediacy, and her content, her subject matter. Um, really interesting. It's deep, it's deep work. She's working with her family history, um, which is something that I've done quite a lot in my work. The other real connection that I have with Luella, and I think it's a fantastic thing in her work, is she kind of crosses into the everyday, where she's got these lovely bags that she makes. So she's making images on objects that become part of the everyday. Um, and that's something that I think is really interesting. I think it's really interesting in terms of contemporary art practice. Um, and it's really interesting in terms of what I'm interested in in my work. So when I met 
with this idea of collaborating with Luella, it felt like it would be an interesting thing to do because of those connections. And what was it like working with Jane? She's the best. You've seen a lot of Jane's artwork, haven't you, up in her studio space? What do you think about her artwork? Amazing. We decided we were going to make these, these coats and we had a kind of brainstorm and I came up with the coat idea and Luella really came up with the content idea that they were just to celebrate weddings and love. So we had our framework which, which really hits on something that was of interest to both of us. But then how we found ourselves together in that framework was difficult at first. Mm. We've got this exchange system going where we worked separately on our fabrics and then we swapped, Luella says we pinched each other's images, but we, we swapped images. Tell me more. She pinched my heart. She pinched your heart. Can you show us where? Is that your, your design, that bit? And did you pinch anything of hers? You pinched her birds. With that exchange comes this letting go of control where you, where you allow somebody to take a print and print onto the fabric that you've been working on. And that's a, that, was, that was really when the project took off. When I first started with John, um, he was very, very one word answer to everything and didn't really kind of face me or talk to me at all really until when I went, when I didn't come to one session because of work, you know, evening work, but then came again and he started a conversation with me and I was like, you know, I felt that development where he might have missed me from the last week and thought, where the, you know, where the hell is Matt? I'm going to kill him kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, then we just ended up working together, sitting down closely together, and I just felt that he kind of accepted me and wanted me to work alongside him. What kind of, what kind of do you think of? You know, your attachment to that? I love his work. It's, it's really unique. I mean, it's, it's different to what I studied in Arte level, what single canvas. Like, I never thought of even like putting 64 canvases together, even if they're like that big, like 30 by 30. I think it's amazing. A learned disabled artist needs to be given absolutely every opportunity to compete within the market. Thank you. 
That's sold, is it? I don't know. What did what did Sarah say about how much your bag? Hundred twenty pounds. Over twenty pounds. Over twenty pounds. Don't know. Sell by the water. Yeah. Is that over twenty pounds? I think it's got to be more than 20 pounds, surely. 40 pounds? 40? <laughs> 40 pounds? 40 pounds each. Each. E A C H. £40 each. That's cheaper than that is, £40 each. Is that cheap? I think so. <laughs> really but I just walked into the room and I turned round something about the colour and the expression on the man's face and um, I don't know what it is really but I just knew I had to have it and I've got a bit of money from my auntie so I've decided that's what I'm going to spend it on and it's made me really happy. It was amazing, it's amazing to see everyone here, it's amazing to see the rocket artists happy and it's really good to see the work appreciated by the public. Are they both sold? Fantastic. There's absolutely no the pretension or the masking um, in order to look clever that you see in so many art exhibitions. So I found it quite an emotional experience, in fact. There's something very honest about the work and I will recommend a lot of people come and see it. Um, I hope it continues. I hope she's able to continue. Perfect. Now, Luella, here's your cheque. Oh, wow, right. For your piece of work. Now, it's for sale for £400. Bloody hell! <laughs> so that's what's on the cheque. £400 to Luella Forrest. Perfect. From Julie Birchall, who's a famous writer. I don't like art generally, but I've never seen art I liked more than this. I love it. Great. <laughs> How does it feel to have sold some work? Perfect. <laughs> Space here, and you know, Zoe went over to get some sandwiches at lunchtime with Zoe. And the guy in the calf was going, Oh, hi, Zoe, I came out to see your work at the private view, you know, I think your work's really excellent and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that's like a real life situation, it's not on her territory, it's not, it's like in the street, you know. And, and now, every time she goes over to get a sani, you know, she's like on a level, yeah, it's a two way thing. And it's We've all helped each other, it isn't just me helping Peter, Peter's helped me as well. The Rocket Artists only has short term funding, so we're looking at ways to make that more sustainable. What we're doing is we're developing an MA in Inclusive Arts Practice. Would you like a place to come and paint a room just for painting that's just your place? Yeah, I would. Because that's what other artists have, they've got a studio space that's just for them, just to do their artwork. Is that yeah. something you would think you would enjoy yeah. and use? Yeah. Like me anymore. Do me own drawings. 
Not everyone in the world wants to become an artist, but if you do, you should have an equal opportunity to do so. But it's, you know, how we change the attitudes out there. Mm. You know, how we really get people to come in and buy into this. Mm. Buy in, mm. literally. Mm. It, it has to be about that. It has to be about that. Pat, Peter and the rest of the Rocket Artists are taking on the same subjects that have fascinated artists for thousands of years. The challenges that face the Rockets are even greater, not because of their disabilities, but because of the prevalent attitudes in society. The amount of work sold at the Phoenix Exhibition proves that the art made by the Rockets has cultural and commercial value. All the Rockets need is the opportunity to continue.